Hi, I'm Mike Cadis. I'm the mayor of City of Missoula. This is the start of a series of shows that we're doing with uh, MCAT. In addition to MCAT's coverage of the regular Monday night city council meetings, MCAT's going to be covering planning board meetings, community forum meetings, and an occasional show from a city department. These shows will focus on the history of our city, um, city projects, uh, city government, and other issues that pertain to the larger valley and community of western Montana. Public access is funded through uh, a franchise fee on cable television. Uh, that tax or fee is then used to fund uh, MCAT, which contracts with the city of Missoula to do the programming. To understand the city of Missoula and the Missoula area, I think it helps to look at a picture of western Montana. And you see Missoula due south of Flathead Lake and probably the main characteristic about Missoula is that it's on really the only east-west cord travel corridor for hundreds of miles in either direction. Uh, you have to go all the way north to Marias Pass to get really any kind of a pass um, and even Marias uh, in many years ago was a very difficult pass to get across and to the south you really have to go all the way to southern Idaho to be able to travel east to west or west to east. So that corridor has really uh, made Missoula a meeting place for all kinds of cultures. Um, the Blackfoot River uh, was known by the Indians as the road to the buffalo. Um, it was a key travel corridor for particularly the Nez Perce and the Salish to get to the buffalo on the plains of eastern Montana. The name Missoula comes from uh, that connection with the buffalo. It, there are many stories about how Missoula got its name. Um, the best one that I've been able to find and what seems to be closest to the truth, uh, I found in the book Following Old Trails. It's a, a book of a compilation of uh, stories and articles written by Arthur Stone, who was the editor of the Missoulian. Um, in the early 1900s and then later became the dean of the journalism school at the U of M. The, the word Missoula comes from the Salish phrase, nem isula ketu, and that is roughly translated to frightening place by the water or place of surprise by the water. And the reason for that name is because it was a a key place of ambush for the Blackfeet uh, to capture uh, and harass both Nez Perce and Salish as they made their journey to the east annually uh, in search of buffalo. And so there were many battles and um, lots of people died in, in that narrow canyon. The, um, the French took that phrase uh, and turned it into Port de Enfer, or the Gate of Hell. And then the English took that and turned it into Hellgate. And that's really where the name of the canyon, Hellgate Canyon, comes from. And really the first community uh, in this area was called Hellgate. Hellgate was actually about four miles uh, west of what we call Missoula now, uh, around Grant Creek. And it started out around 1860. And you can see here the first warden's market. This is Frank Warden um, at, at his Hellgate post. Hellgate had a fairly exciting um, reputation. Uh, it, from in the early 1860s, it averaged a population of about 14 people. In one two-year stretch, amid a couple of visits by the vigilantes, there were 11 deaths of the, with the population of 14. All of those deaths were unnatural. Um, it was a pretty rough place, and uh, a lot of uh, outlaws tended to hang out in this neck of the woods. Around in the middle 1860s, 1864, 1865, the 
the folks who had come, uh, Warden and some others, decided that what we needed was a sawmill. And to do that, they needed a fresh source of power, um, which would be water power. And so they created Missoula Mills, which really, which was a mill that uh, was established right about where um, the Higgins Street Bridge is these days. That really is what um, the, the community began to grow around that mill at that time, and the small uh, community of Hellgate withered and eventually most folks moved to what became Missoula. One of the first buildings in downtown Missoula was the Missoula Mercantile. Um, it still stands today and is the bond. It's been a, a stalwart centerpiece of the downtown area for um, nearly 100 years. Another key part of early Missoula was the Northern Pacific Railway. It was established in 1889, um, and Missoula was a central hub and really quite a railroad town. And you can see lots of remnants of that on the north side and in the downtown area. At the early part of the century, uh, Missoula was mostly north of the river, and getting across the river was a problem. Uh, there were a couple of attempts at bridges, uh, most of which were washed out. Um, pretty good bridge was in place by 1809, but then the 1809 flood uh, took it out as well. But after that flood, the town began to move more across to the south side of the banks. And of course, the, the thing that really uh, set up the growth on the south side of the banks was the University of Montana. The story of the University of Montana is an interesting one. Um, Montana became a state in 1899, and the Missoula delegation first attempted to bring the University of Montana, or Montana State University as it was known, to Missoula in the 1891 legislative session. They failed, and part of the reason they failed was because none of the legislators from Helena supported the proposal. The main competition at that time was Great Falls, who they wanted to have the sole univer state university in Great Falls. In 1892, there was a, a referendum to locate the state capital, and there were six or seven communities that were vying for it, uh, and two front runners emerged, Helena and Anaconda though neither of them uh, received enough votes to actually become the state capital. But it was narrowed down to Helena and Anaconda in the, in the 1892 referendum. In the 1893 legislature, Missoula again tried to become the home of the university. And they finally were successful, and they did it by striking a deal with the Helena delegation. And it was essentially a trade. If Helena would support Missoula, as the home of the university, the Missoula delegation would support Helena as the home of the state capital. There was another referendum then in 1894. Uh, the Missoula delegation actively campaigned for Helena. Um, and while Missoula didn't go uh, even a majority for Helena, there was a significantly more support from Missoula than, the eight, than in the 1892 referendum, and Helena did win. That was also a fairly notorious election. Um, there was, uh, this was part of the War of the Copper Kings, and lots of alcohol and money uh, flowed freely in order to buy votes uh, for Helena and Anaconda. Missoula has a, a, a real wealth of old historic buildings, and one of the real treasures of Missoula is the downtown with its wide sidewalks and uh, high density of businesses. But over time, we've also lost some buildings. This side is a view looking west on Front Street uh, at the junction of Front and Higgins. And the building on the right is the old Florence Hotel, which burned down. The building on the left is the Hammond Building, which also burned down. And the picture is taken from the first interstate building 
which was torn down um, about 1960. So we've also lost a number of really classic buildings. Uh, one of the things that we struggle with is trying to keep and enhance those old buildings, particularly in the downtown area. Um, I think we all recognize the value of the architecture of that time and, and the character that those types of buildings add to our community. Another uh, great building of Missoula is the Montana building. Um, this is it, the Montana building in 1911 um, during a visit where um, Theodore Roosevelt came to Missoula. He's uh, at about street level, but you can see a really beautiful building um, six stories, uh, it was a bank building. It's still a part of Missoula, though much of the, the, the decoration uh, and facades have been covered up uh, over the years. Another great building of Missoula, for Missoula is the Wilma building. Um, the Wilma's got a great history, um, lots of mystery about it, uh, but it's been a real um, icon and standard for our community for years and years, and it's nice to see it getting fixed up again. A newer addition is the Millennium Building, uh, built just on the other side of Higgins, um, just upstream from the Wilma Building. Um, this is, uh, I think, a big a change for Missoula, and we see kind of the impacts of growth, and what I think is a positive impact of as a community, we're trying to uh, grow up rather than out, uh, and I hope that the Millennium Building is an example of that. One of the, the things about the Millennium Building that uh, we haven't done very much of in the past is that it will have some housing in it, so the, the top two floors will be residences. Uh, the, the rest of the floors will be uh, commercial office space. Another old building from Missoula uh, recently came down. This is the St. Patrick's Hospital last fall, and it was imploded. Uh, took all of about 15 seconds, and a uh, place where I think a lot of people have fond memories. I think many Missoulians were actually born in the St. Patrick's Hospital. What we see today is a new uh, modern medical complex that's being built there um, should be done in another uh, I think a year and a half is the construction time frame um, but over the years Missoula has become an important medical center for all of western Montana and St. Pat's has recognized the need to update their facilities um, and uh, are investing in the neighborhood of uh, 50 or 60 million dollars to do that. Missoula has changed quite a bit um, over the years, and one of the issues that we deal with the most today is, is that change and how, how do we handle it? Um, I think it's helpful to look back over time and look at what, what we used to be. This picture was taken uh, in 1937. Uh, that's the fairgrounds and Malfunction Junction. Uh, it's just a crossing of dirt tracks at that time, um, a little more than 60 years ago. Since then, this has really become the geographic center of town, um, and we've grown several miles uh, both to the south and to the west. I think in the future, we can probably expect to see that type of growth continuing. Um, and so how we plan for that growth is pretty critical in terms of what our community will look like over the next 20 or 30 or 50 years. This is a graph that shows uh, Missoula's growth uh, and also the growth of other cities in Montana. Um, some interesting things, you can see a lot of Montana history in this graph. Um, Butte, so Butte was a great mining town, uh, peaked at over 40,000 people um, in the early 1920s. And then slid and then had a, a, a renaissance with the open pit mine, um, but then has really not grown much at all. Great Falls uh, benefited from the agricultural of eastern Montana um, and the, was also a major uh, smelting area for the Anaconda mines, uh, particularly the Butte mine. 
and uh, the home of a large number of uh, missiles. It has peaked out as well um, in the 1970s, and its growth has been flat. And in fact, just this last year, Missoula passed Great Falls in population to become the second largest city in Montana. Billings, of course, uh, has had rapid growth from the 60s on and has really outpaced all other Montana cities by quite a bit. Um, the other one city that's changing rapidly is Bozeman. Helena has grown some over the years, but it's more of a steady type of growth. Bozeman has, has boomed in the same way that Missoula has um, over the last uh, 10 or 15 years. One of the things that Missoula did um, a couple of years ago, in the face of all the growth that we've been experiencing, was in 1995, we passed an open space bond. That was for $5 million, um, and the first purchase was um, Mount Jumbo. Um, that took $2 million of the $5 million. Since then, we've also purchased uh, land on the North Hills, the Randolph Ranch. Um, we've purchased the, the face of Mount Sentinel, um, about 100 acres out at Fort Missoula for playing fields, and uh, the, we used open space money to leverage other transportation funds to purchase the Bitterroot Spur trail along uh, the Bitterroot Spur Railroad that heads up the Bitterroot. Other changes that Missoula has seen is that we recently finished construction on a new transit center. Um, one of the things that we'd been missing as far as our transit si system was an actual center. Um, it had been kind of kicked from one corner to the next uh, over the last 15 years. And I think we finally decided that we really needed to create a home if we were serious about transit and try to make this system work. And so we built what I think is a, a very nice center, um, comfortable and durable, uh, that will help people get in and out of the elements. And also, it creates a place for people who are interested in transit and want to use the bus or to get from A to B. Um, I think we've made a lot of progress in this area. You see lots of... Um, you see some new park and rides forming, uh, and we also have a pretty good partnership with the University of Montana, uh, trying to deal with some of the parking problems that are created at U of M uh, because of the large number of students and staff who use that facility. Uh, another project that got finished not too long ago is the California Street Footbridge. The California Street Footbridge replaces um, an old bridge, it was an automobile bridge uh, many years ago, was actually condemned and taken apart around 1980. Uh, it, it was a very handy uh, way uh, for pedestrians and bicyclists to get across. It's particularly nice now because it's right next to Eagle Watch Estates, which is a, uh, a place for developmentally disabled people, and uh, it's wheelchair accessible. It's a good way for people uh, who don't have a lot of mobility to get out and really be right in the thick of a great, beautiful riparian area. Another great project that the community has done, um, really without much help from local government, is the Glacier Ice Rink. Um, it uh, was really put together by a dedicated group of uh, private individuals who just really wanted to have ice to play hockey and to skate on. Um, and now it's used pretty much all hours of the day. I know that there are practices that are scheduled uh, after 11 o'clock at night, and it starts up pretty early in the morning. It's really become a great asset to our community. And it shows what a little work can do, um, and stick to itiveness and community effort can put together a project like this. We have a great um, experience with doing things as a community. The carousel project, uh, the Missoula Children's Theater, um, the downtown uh, Karis Park Pavilion are all things that uh, citizens and residents have kind of gotten together on and really made happen themselves. We do it together as a community. Um, they help build us as a community, but they create great places for people to get together and meet and enjoy themselves. Another major project that's happening downtown um, 
that I'm afraid a lot of people are probably aware of uh, because of the inconvenience that it creates. Uh, but when it gets done, it'll be a real improvement, and that's the Orange Street Bridge. Um, the bridge has uh, been, uh, is a bottleneck in terms of traffic, but also in terms of for bicyclists and pedestrians. And when we get the new bridge built with uh, four lanes for traffic and two bike lanes and two separated sidewalks, I think it'll be a, a great place, a great way to get across the river and also to just go out and see the river from a good vantage point. Missoula is a community that really values the outdoors and values opportunities for our children. So we work hard to try to keep our park system up. Um, this is one of our city pools. Uh, we've also got lots of trails and recreational programs and opportunities for kids to, to do things uh, that get them out and about and also get them knowing each other and knowing uh, everyone else in the community. Um, we try to create uh, opportunities for kids to work with all age groups uh, and to, to really get a good sense of what Western Montana is about, which a large part of which I think is just being out in it. I want to shift gears for a little bit here um, and, and talk about the city government itself. We have about uh, a general fund budget of uh, $23 million a year. I've got a couple of pie charts here to show what it is we do. Um, there are about four major areas that the, the city of Missoula is, um, spends its money on. Uh, the first is police protection. Um, about 25% of our budget goes to police. We have over 80 police officers and the department has over 100 people in it. The fire department is next with about 20% 20, 20 of the budget. Um, we have about 75 full-time firemen. We have about 75 full-time firefighters. <clears throat> One thing about police and fire is that they're both uh, departments that have to be staffed 24 hours a day. And it takes about five full-time people to have enough coverage to do one, have one person available for 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So that's one of the reasons these cost so much. They're critically important to our community. I mean, they involve um, safety and security. Uh, but it's not, an ex it's not a cheap kind of service to be able to provide. And the people who do this work also um, are in positions of risk at times. Uh, whether you're a policeman or a firefighter, um, you're often put into dangerous circumstances. The other big things that we do are uh, the Public Works Department uh, is about 17 percent of our budget. Public Works is a, does a number of things from the engineering division to um, the streets division to uh, sewer and building codes. Mostly what what we see in our day-to-day -day life are, is the streets department. Um, they take care of our streets. They pick up the leaves, they do the snow plowing, they sand the streets, put on the de-icer, and occasionally, uh, when we have time in the summer, do street repair. Um, but they're, it's a pretty big department, and it's important. Uh, they do work that covers all hours of the day, too. And in fact, we change our shifts around quite a bit in the winter so that we can have good coverage during the snow season. The other department that I think is worth noting is the Parks Department. And this is about 10 percent of our budget, but parks and recreation is one of those very important amenities that we all appreciate and expect in a community. And it's one of the reasons that we live here, is because there are parks. Um, there are some really great parks in Missoula, like Karras Park and Bonner Park and Greeno Park. But there are lots of parks throughout the city that offer a variety of recreational op opportunities. And we do our best to keep those up and to create new opportunities in those parks. In general, the types of things that we do as a city are we provide um, goods or services that wouldn't get provided very well if, it were, if they were just being done by the private market. They are what are uh, known as, they are what are known as public goods. They 
are the types of things that we do better when we do them collectively. So like police, we could all hire our own security firm and receive a level of security that way, but it's a lot more cost effective when we do it together. Um, same thing with fire protection or with uh, creating streets or with parks and with open space is the latest example. Um, it's a lot easier for us to collectively buy and use open space than it is if we just allow the, pr the private market to do that for us. So that's one of the reasons that you see citizens of Missoula voting over 60% support for something like an open space bond that increased all of our taxes by oh, two or three mills. Um, but we all get a benefit from that. Those are the kinds of things that a city government does. They are primarily the types of things that we, we do much more efficiently in an economic sense when we do them all together. It costs us less if we do them all together than if we try to do them individually. Another thing to look at in our budget is how we spend our money on what types of things do we spend our money. Um, and so this pie chart shows you that about 65% of our expenditures go to wages and, and benefits. So essentially that tells you that we're an organization as the city of Missoula that is really highly dependent on personnel. It's the people who work for the city, the, the policemen, the firefighters, the streets department, the people who work in our parks. That's what really makes up and provides the services that you get from the city of Missoula. We're absolutely dependent on them, those employees, to do a good job for the rest of the community. This last graph I wanted to show you um, indicates where our money comes from. Uh, as you can see, about half of the city's general fund revenue comes from property taxes. Um, that's a pretty big chunk. The next biggest chunk that is directly identifiable, identified is 9% uh, from video gaming. And that's something that's happened over the last uh, 12 or 15 years as video gaming has become more popular and as the legislature has allowed more of it, um, the taxes on video gaming are split between the state and the local government where the video gaming hap happens uh, two parts to one. So the state gets one third and the cities or counties get two thirds. But it's become a huge part of our budget, you know, almost 10%, which makes many people uneasy uh, because there are also lots of moral and ethical issues that go along with gambling. Um, and uh, it's not something we're always comfortable with, but in order to fund the services that we provide, this is one of the revenue sources that we have. Um, and we've, over the, the last years, as the legislature has frozen property taxes, um, we, you've seen cities and counties moving towards other sources of revenue. So what you see here is not uncommon. We get a number of licenses and permits, also some intergovernmental transfers. Um, but as you can see, the main part of our revenues come from tax, taxes. The city is made up of, um, in, in terms of our government, we have a city council that is uh, our, the city is split into six uh, roughly equally sized wards. Um, each ward has two representatives or alder people, um, and they are elected for four year, alternating four-year terms. Um, so we have a 12-person city council, and then the mayor is elected citywide, and then we have a municipal judge that is elected citywide. The city council is primarily responsible for the policy of the city and the mayor is primarily responsible as the chief administrative officer uh, maintaining the, and the executive branch making sure that all those policies get carried out. Not unlike what you see at the state government between the governor and the legislature. The, we put up this map on city councils, on the city council ward so that you can see which ward you're in and also identify who your alder person is. Another uh, map I want to show you has to do with our neighborhood councils. We have 17 neighborhood councils in the city now. Um, they all elect their own leadership teams 
and then collectively form the community forum, which you see occasionally, once a month, I believe, on MCAT. The neighborhood councils are something that were created in the, our new city charter that was passed in 1995. They uh, are another mechanism for citizens to uh, influence city government and what happens within our city. So there are three main ways to affect um, how things happen. One is through the neighborhood councils. The second is through your own city alderman or alderwoman. And the third is through uh, my office, the mayor's office, or any of the departments that you may have an issue with or you have a suggestion. And we encourage you to give us a call and let us know what you think. If you'd like more information, um, please do give us a call. Um, we've listed our phone number and email address and, addre and our uh, snail mail address. Um, we appreciate com comments and suggestions. Uh, we try to be responsive uh, uh, when people do ask us uh, for suggestions. Well, that's a pretty brief history and overview of what the city of Missoula is and is trying to do. Um, if you have suggestions, we'd really like to hear from you. Um, I've listed our uh, address and email address and phone number. We appreciate uh, hearing from you. Um, I hope this has been helpful. And I look forward to seeing uh, other shows that you'll see from other departments. I understand the fire department's uh, working on one. And I know we'll see some from Public Works Department on projects that they've got coming up. Hopefully, the other thing we're trying to do through this program is to enhance the, the visibility of the planning board and the community forum. Um, so if you can't always attend those meetings, you're at least able to watch them on, on MCAT and participate in that way. Thanks very much.